Now let's take some quiz on the topics that we've covered until now. First question. Average fixed cost can be obtained through A. AFC equals to TFC divided by TS. B. AFC equals to EC divided by TU. C. AFC equals to TC divided by PC. And D. AFC equals to TFC divided by TU. The answer is AFC equals to TFC divided by TU. That's the answer. A firm's average fixed cost is rupees 20 at 6 units. What will be what will it be at 4 units of output? A rupees 60, B rupees 30, C rupees 40, D rupees 20. Look, the average fixed cost equals to total fixed cost upon quantity. Now we have the average fixed cost as 20 for 6 units. Therefore, we will get what is the total fixed cost. Now the total fixed cost will be 6 into 20 which equals to 120 rupees. I know that the total fixed cost is 120 rupees and the total fixed cost always remains constant. So whatever be the level of production, be it 2 units, be it 4 units, be it 6 or 10, the total fixed cost will always remain constant. So in the given question we are asked average fixed cost at 4 units. The average fixed cost at 4 units will be again TFC upon Q. TFC here remains same. Q is 4. Therefore, the answer is 30. 120 divided by 4 is 30. Let's check. Yes, the answer is 30. U-shaped average cost curve is based on A. Law of increasing cost B. Law of decreasing cost C. Law of constant returns to scale and D. Law of variable proportions The answer is D. The law of variable proportions Let's check That's the answer Look there is no law by the name of law of increasing cost. Again, there is no law by the name of law of decreasing cost. The law of returns to scale operates only in the long run. The only law that remains which operates in the short run is the law of variable proportions. When shape of average cost curve is upward, marginal cost A must be decreasing, must be constant, C must be rising, D any of these. See, when the average cost curve is shaping upwards, what happens to the marginal cost? We've done these three properties. When the average cost curve is falling, the marginal cost curve is below the average cost curve. Second, when the average cost curve meets the marginal cost curve, average cost curve is at its minimum point. And final, third, when the average cost curve is rising, the marginal cost curve is also rising. And it is not only rising, but it rises above. It goes 
above the average cost curve. So in this case, the answer will be it must be rising. Let's check. That's the answer. Which of the following cost curves is never U-shaped? A. Average cost curve. B. Marginal cost curve. C. Total cost curves. D. Fixed cost curve. I told you all the cost curves are generally U-shaped except for the fixed cost curve. The fixed cost curve is always parallel to the x-axis. Let's check. That's the answer. What is the total cost of production of 20 units if fixed cost is rupees 5000 and variable cost is rupees 2? A. 5400 B. 5040 C. 4960 D. 5020 We are asked to calculate the total cost. Total cost equals to fixed cost plus variable cost. The fixed cost is 5000. Variable cost is 2 for 1 unit. So for 20 units it will be 5000 plus 40. This equals 5040. So this is the answer. Let's check. That's the answer. At which point does the marginal cost curve intersect the average variable cost curve and short run average cost curve? At which point does the marginal cost curve intersect the average variable cost curve and the short run average total cost curve? At their lowest points. Both are minimum when the marginal cost curve intersects them. A firm producing 7 units of output has an average total cost of Rs. 150 and has to pay 350 to its fixed factors of production. How much the average total cost is made up of variable cost? Look, in this example, we are given average total cost, which is 150 for 7 units. Again, we are given the total fixed cost, which is 350. Now, we are asked to find out the proportion of variable cost in the average total cost. So average total cost is nothing but average variable cost plus average fixed cost. Average fixed cost here is 350 divided by 7 and average variable cost we are required to find out. We are given the average total cost. So ABC equals to 150 minus 350 divided by 7 is 50. So ABC here is 100. Let's check. That's the answer. Calculate total cost of 4 units. What will be the total cost in this schedule? A140, B40, C50 or D120? The answer is D120. Let's calculate how. The total cost 
for two units is 80 and marginal cost for producing the next two units is 30 so for marginal cost for third unit is 30 marginal cost for fourth unit is 30 again so the total is 80 plus 30 110 110 plus 30 140 Oh, sorry, the answer is 140. Find average fixed cost for three units from the schedule given. The schedule given has the total cost attached to the level of output. For zero units, the total cost is 30 units. Now it's very easy to understand when you are not producing anything and yet you are incurring cost. That means that cost is nothing but the fixed cost. So we have the fixed cost equals to 30. Now, since the fixed cost is 30, it will remain constant for all the number of units. So, for producing 3 units, the average fixed cost will be 30 by 3, which equals to 10. So, the answer is 10. What will be the total variable cost if we produce 2 units? In this case, we are incurring rupees 20 even when no units are produced. This means that fixed cost, that is the total fixed cost is 20 and this 20 will remain constant for all the units. So when we are producing two units, Total cost equals to total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Total cost is 50 is 20 plus TVC. Therefore, TVC equals 50 minus 20. Therefore, TVC equals 30. That's the answer. Next, what will be the marginal cost of 67 units of production accounting to the table given below? The table given below gives you the production and cost. For 0 units, the total cost is 160. For 10 units, the total cost is 200. For 25 units, the total cost is 300. For 37 units, the total cost is 500. And finally, for 67 units, the total cost is 1400. Normally, in this case, we calculate the marginal cost as total cost at n units minus total cost at n minus 1 units. Now, if I want to find the marginal cost at 67 units, I should have the total cost at 67th unit which I have. I should also have the total cost at 66th unit 
which I do not have. So this formula will fail in this case. The formula that we will use is marginal cost equals to change in total cost upon change in quantity. Change in total cost here is 1400 minus 500 upon change in quantity is 67 minus 37. Therefore, this equals 900 upon 30 which is nothing but 30. So, our answer is 30. Next, when average cost curve is rising, the marginal cost curve must be dashed to it. A equal, B above, C below, D parallel. When the average cost curve is rising, the marginal cost curve is always above it. That's the answer. Which statement among the below is correct in reference to average fixed cost a never becomes zero b curve never touches x axis c curve never touches y axis d all of these <laughs> let's draw up the average fixed cost here. This is the x-axis showing the output and this is the y-axis showing the cost in rupees. Now average fixed cost generally looks like this. This is the average fixed cost curve. Now in this case you can see that the average fixed cost curve is going on falling and it gets nearer to x-axis. However, it will never touch the x-axis. It will never meet the x-axis because for it to meet the x-axis, it is necessary that the total fixed cost should be zero. And this can never be the case. There will be some amount of fixed cost always. Fixed cost can never be zero. Since it will never become zero, it will never touch the x-axis also. At the same time, it will never touch the y-axis. Because even when there is no production, zero units are produced, the average fixed cost is infinity. And thus, it is never zero. So, it never touches the y-axis also. So, in this case, this is correct, never becomes zero. This is also correct, curve never touches x-axis. This is also correct, the curve never touches y-axis. So, all of these are correct. Let's check. That's the right answer. 